Good evening, sure to say good early morning for those who are awake here with uh, Brother Ape Sirius, or you can call me Sergeant Sirius, whichever, the, whichever one you prefer, I hope everybody is either asleep or awake, or where everybody's been doing good. If for me, uh, I've been uh, doing pretty good uh, getting my workouts. I do during the day. Still have a lot of things I have to do to bet, get back on the right path. Um, so just a late night feed for those who view this video. I'm just gonna talk a little bit of what I've seen, what I've experienced in my life, to makes me makes me the person who I am and why. I always stay focused and how should I say I said it in my mind I don't cousin Jesus Carvajal you know it's always been within me you know the you could say the warrior it's always been there uh, you know the the heart of the warrior the to, to climb the obstacles you know all throughout my life it has been that uh, obstacles after obstacles after obstacles and some of them uh, some of those obstacles are the ones that you don't know if you're going to be able to get out of the obstacles or not because they're that serious you know and I've been having these obstacles you know I know everybody goes through something but all my life you know I've been tested physically spiritually where I've seen the balance. For those who don't believe that there's a heaven or a hell, they don't believe in the angels or demons, I'm just here to tell you, they're here amongst us. You know, I've seen them all my life. Just like there's uh, good workers uh, that work for the Heavenly Father, there's evil workers that work for Lucifer. Uh, they know who I am just like I can tell who they are. Um, it goes by the works that they do. Uh, some people might be doing evil works not knowing that they're doing evil works for Lucifer because they're being bonded and being used to come up against people in a negative way. Uh, for example, how people come at me in a negative way all this for a while now. Uh, it's nothing new to me. Uh, I've witnessed negative people all my life. The people I witness, I guess, I guess you could say, they were more dangerous spiritually for those that didn't have the wisdom and knowledge to be able to fight them spiritually. They would be more dangerous in that manner uh, if they wouldn't be able to know what to do when they came up against them in a negative way. These evil people that I speak of, when they get close to you, they start crying. Why do they start crying? Because the, the demons that are within them, right, or that are bonding them or what they believe in, when they shed a tear, what they're actually doing is trying to transfer that unclean spirits to you through the tear ducts. So I suggest if that ever happens to you, that you run, uh, wind up in a situation where somebody is in front of you doing that, or they're trying to speak to you when their tears are coming out of their eyes, or they're trying to throw you off so you, so you can't pay attention to what's really going on to the bigger picture, I say, you say to them, God bless you, I love you, or I rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, when you do that, they're going to turn around and take off running because what they were trying to do to you, uh, it goes back to them because you're not accepting it in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. There's just a, a little bit of the, the trials and tribulations that have been through my life, you know, makes me who I am uh, now as an individual. I've, I've learned a lot from these experiences, you know. People, some people might say, it's like, well, 
where's this all all this evil that brother hcs is about i'm doing fine in my life look around if you really want to pay attention spiritually don't pay attention materialistically or what's going on in this world or what this world has to provide do experience it spiritually you gotta have a a relationship with the heavenly father to be able to experience it spiritually uh, because he's the one that guides us he's the one that protects us uh, you know i can i can speak to you of, of numerous stories of of people that come up me up against me in a negative way where when i was a kid numerous times i, I can't even count them it's kind of like when you swim in water imagine swimming in water and there's nothing but rats around you right because that's how many ugly spirits there is well that's that was my life that's what i will witness i will witness these things all the time how you doing cousin uh it's kind of like they even tried to befriend me uh, uh uh they try to friend me like trying to deceive me uh for example you know, since we talk about shadow people how about we talk about uh people want to call them imaginary friend you know when they say that they're talking to somebody because a, a child is seeing somebody well i remember uh the one that would come to me uh during the summer when my mom would be cooking it would be hot as hell outside and there was this boy he seemed like a boy because you know the in the valley when i was growing up we had no ac we had no ceiling fans uh, the only thing we had some big, big screen windows to keep the house fresh, right? And the screen windows were pretty, pretty good size. I remember uh, this shadow figure that will manifest to look like a boy, and he'd be peeking through the window, through the screen windows. He places, he would place his face by the screen window, and you could see it get indented on the screen window. And my mother would tell me, who's who's that? Is that your friend? Go play with them. I said, Mom, I don't know who it is, you know. So I remember, I believe she was spiritually gifted also, you know, because if she was seeing it, right, and she, she was spiritually gifted. So I go out there, and I see him going around the corner of the house. You know, you know when you talk about parallel, uh, the people say, oh, I, I, I see something, I see something through my parallel vision. Well, imagine going to, to the corner of the house and you see something going run to the corner so you run and you see it going around another corner so that's the way it was by the time i would catch her to the corner and then and the house was pretty long i could only uh i would see it go around the corner so it's like i would stop i get tired you know running after what i thought was a a boy so i'll go back inside the house because it was hot and I would sit down, and it's like my mom said, "Why are you? Why are you inside? How come you're not playing outside?" Uh, I said, "Mom, there's no. The boy doesn't want to play with me, you know, because he's, he's running so fast that he didn't even stop to play with me." So there, as as I'm sitting there, it's kind of, this will happen uh, every summer. Like it was during the summertime because it was, I, I, when we were out of school, it would be hot as hell, and he will come, you know, and until I started noticing that it wasn't a boy that it was a a shadow that had the ability to ma manifest as a boy so I, i'm going to ask you a question right now now i was a kid it's like we're seeing it manifest in the to look like a boy but it uh, it wasn't so if if i was believing it was a boy and I was chasing it around, I was giving it some kind of power, right? To be able to, to manifest the tech form, right? Because I'm believing it's somebody out there. Till after a while, you know, it's like I, every time I will see, see him, you know, it's like I stopped chasing him because I knew within myself that there wasn't a boy, that it was a shadow figure of some sort. But it had the abilities to look like you and me, you know.
It will happen, uh, like I said, every summer in the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas. You know, uh, the other things that I will that I would notice, if, if anybody got any questions about what I'm speaking of, Brother Joe Cervantes, uh, he used to live uh, uh, down Main Street. He lived, let me see, one, two blocks away from me. So I, I'm more sure he probably seen some kind of activity there in uh in the valley there was a lot of activity uh in the real ground when i grew up you know uh what some of the activities that would happen at our house and i i'll tell you what even during the day it happens is to our, to uh, to our left side of our home it was this old woman her name was doña josefina uh Josie she was an old woman she had a lot of fruits at her house and she was always giving us pomegranates and uh peaches and all kinds of stuff right that she she would grow a lot of fruits but what would happen uh is the activity that would happen at at night time uh, you could hear from her house to her fence to the tree line that was by the fence you could hear women chanting, uh, laughing. You could hear talons like, you know, we call them lechuzas in Spanish, which is a witch that's able to manifest into a, like a giant owl, you know, whatever they call lechuzas in Spanish. I remember they would come every Saturday to our house and my mom would gather us up, you know, and she would put us in a little circle because around 10 o'clock, that's when it would start. 10 o'clock at night, every night, on every Saturday night, we'll be there. Uh, and my mom would be like, do you hear that? And we're just trying to figure out what we're hearing. You know, our, our home had uh, palm crosses on each window and on the doors, up on the doorways. So we're hearing, like, we start hearing, like, like scratching. Then we start hearing tappings, three tappings, knockings, bangings. Uh, then we start hearing whisperings where they're whispering something, and then we start hearing them laugh, you know, and they're coming from the left side of our home. And... You start hearing uh, our houses on pillars. Yeah, brother Joe, I remember you, man. Yeah, yeah right there. Uh, I remember you and your bro, man. Uh, when I I used to come from track practice, I don't know if it was it was you I would talk to, or it was your brother. You would see me, or one. I know it was you or your brother, and you would tell me. You know how was how was track, and I'll tell you, it's good. It's about once I once I turn eighteen, I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here. Uh, I think I, I told you I suggest y'all leave too, <laughs> because we were going through a lot. You know, uh, we were going through a lot in in Raymondville, Texas, as you know. You know the the the, the police has already been corrupt there. You know, in which uh, they put hits out on you. You know, if they see you as a, as a threat. To what they're doing and which what they're doing is a lot of illegal activities whether it's robbing the, the they used to be a walmart that walmart got robbed all the time by the police department or they were messing with the family you know that's what they would do and a lot of these guys that were ex-military ex-veterans so they were work by uh, they were they were kind of messed up you know some of them were vietnam vets so they will cause a lot of chaos and havoc, a lot of division. Uh, they will bully a lot of people, uh, and they, they will, I believe they took out a lot of people also. Um, I remember they had uh, one of the Reinas, one of the sons of the Reinas that live in the corner, you know, Eva Reina, Araceli, and uh, the Reinas. I remember I was going to the store, and as I was going through the alley, the police had them, you know, they were beating them up 
with the batons and stuff. So I got I got freaked out. You know, I was a kid and I ran and told the the, the father. You know, of the reina said the front the son was getting beat up. So he they they intervene and you know it's kind of like. You know, I would see a lot of crazy stuff like that that the police would do there in Raymondville, Texas. I mean, and I'm only sure that it's, of what I hear, the same thing happened because they're following suit of what was taught to them. They're, they don't want to change to better that city. That's why the city, when I last time I seen it, it looked like a ghost town. Like, it's 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 messed up, man. You know, they they, they, they want poverty. They want free handouts and uh, from the government. They get the free handouts from the government and they use it for themselves. They don't help the city out. They don't help the people out within the city. I mean, that's what I witnessed when I used to live there and what I witnessed now, you know. But besides that, let me get back to my story. Uh, yes, Brother Joe Cervantes, he, he lived, he's younger than me. He used to live two blocks away from me. So getting back to when all those noises were happening, you know, my mom would get her in her knees and she would start praying, you know, she would start praying to our father and we're there praying with her. You know, I got tired of this thing's happening, you know. It's like, man, well, who's messing with us, you know? I was just a, a kid and I'm like, who's messing with us? I was already like in fourth grade, fifth grade. I was a pitcher. Uh, for a little league team, so I went outside one day and I said, you know what, I'm going outside to see what's what's messing with with us because I'm tired. You know, this has been happening all our lives since I was a kid. So I went out there and my mom said, don't go, don't go. I went out there and I, I seen up towards the tree. This one I seen them. It was like three of them. They were big. It was not a a bird. They looked like witches, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Or what people call sirens. You know, uh, what are those those mythological creatures that are up there that are black? Well, that's what it looked like to me on the tree. So, so I got this this caliche, big rocks. I was hitting the targets where you could hear the thumps hitting them, like hard, and they wouldn't fly. They wouldn't fly away. And you figure you, you, you hit a bird, and this was not a little, they were massive. They were the size of, of of people probably bigger than a person on a tree. They were massive. So I remember my grandmother would come out of the darkness sometimes. One time that I remember when I was fighting them, hitting them with the, uh, with the rocks, she said something to them. I don't know what she said. I don't know if she was talking a different language or what, but it was no Spanish or English. All I know is they flew away, and they have big wings. You know, they flew away, and she just looked at me and told me to tell my, my mother that everything was going to be okay. But that's what normally happens, brothers and sisters, when there's a spiritual head on you. Or uh, one of the things that I witnessed when I was growing up was wish battles. Wish battles. I doing uh, brother Michael Cougar. I witnessed a lot of wish battles when I was growing up. Uh, you know, when you're caught in the midst of, I guess you could say, witches fighting a witch, a witch with a witch, which means there's a lot of magic, a lot of, uh, I should have say, back and forth, where somebody's uh, wishing bad upon somebody. And then they wish bad upon that individual and just going back and forth. Well, I got caught up in the midst of that, of a wish there was a lot of, I should have say, uh, no, I'm not going to say paranormal. I'm going to say uh, supernatural. I'll say it like that. Supernatural activity happening. Some of the things that will happen is when I will wake up, we had an outdoor latrine when I was growing up. When I go to the outdoor latrine, uh, I noticed there would be dead cats on the fence line, ripped down the middle with all the guts hanging. Uh, my neighbor had a lot of cats, and all those cats were like somebody would cut them out where the the 
everything was hanging you know, from the scats. Um, that's one of the, the things that I will witness. The other things that I will witness was this, I would say it was a, it was a demon, but I'll say it like this. When we talk about skinwalkers, shapeshifters, there's got to be something uh, in that nature that I that I witnessed because what I witnessed was a tall. It was like six, I say like six something or possibly seven foot tall, uh, dressed with the feathers, like he was some kind of chief of some sort. And he would go and 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 sit down native style, right there by the corner of a fence, where the pole was. And he would start chanting uh, something in a, in a different language, you know. I would witness him all the time or whatever it was, you know. Uh, I believe it was something demonic that would manifest in the way. I know my father challenged, he went out there to fight against it spiritually one time. But he kind of overcame him because um, he probably had a spiritual opening. Uh, but he told them that he could have whatever he wanted, but he had to do something. And what he had to do uh, is take out his family. So what kind of offer is that, right? It had to be demonic, you know. Uh, but when that was happening, you know, whether there was deals made or, or whatever the case might be, we started witnessing a lot of other activities within our, in Spanish it's called solar, in English it's lots, it's a four lot. Our grandmother used to live to the left. We lived in the same four lot, it was in the same fenced up area. There were side, side by side homes. Uh, one evening I witnessed, uh, you hear somebody saying something outside and Next thing you know, we start hearing uh, all kinds of different kinds of animals. For example, horses. This is within a city. We're hearing horses. We're hearing lions. Lions' voices. Disembodied voices of different animals. You know, lions, cougars, panthers, jag noises that they make. That was happening. You know, and there was a lot of activity. Like for example, with the noises. You could hear like a man yelling with a whip. You could hear a whip. You could hear uh, bangings, the running on top of the roof, bangs underneath the, our home. Home that was on pillars, and it was a mixture, a lot of activity. And what happened? It happened two different times. Uh, and it, ha it happened all night to early in the morning. So when the sun rose, you know, we was already tired because we were being awakened by the activity that was happening inside our home. When there's demonic activity or or something, the, the devil or whatever, right? When they surface up, they cause that kind of activity, which you're going to hear things out of the ordinary that are not supposed to be in your local area because they're not from that area. Like, for example, the lions we're hearing. We're hearing elephant noises. We're hearing all kinds of different noises. So when we went out, uh, when the sun rose, we went outside. And what we witnessed, this is a true story. What we witnessed was different manure or crap of different animals on the four lots. The crap was everywhere on the ground. It, it's like it covered the lots, the, the yards, front and back. So was there a portal that might have manifested open for these things to make the presence there? Or was there, you know, when they say that sometimes that when there's, uh, how should I say, identified flying objects that you know you heard it where they said that they take the animals into the spaceships or whatever could it have been that me and my brother we we spent all day 
Saturday, from Saturday morning all the way to Saturday afternoon, shoveling shit. Put it in a wheelbarrow. The, it would be heavy because there was so much crap. We had to uh, shovel up and put it in the wheelbarrow. We would carry it through the alley and dump it in the alley. We spent a whole Saturday doing that. Shoveling different different kinds of crap. And the thing is, brothers and sisters, there is no way in the world that that could have happened. The reason I say that is because every evening, or, 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 or lot, the four lots were surrounded by a fence. We would chain up the front and the back fence plus the, the main gate. So there's no way in the world that should have happened. But uh, supernatural-wise, there is a way, right? The only way that could happen if there's a spiritual opening or somebody's doing something that they're not supposed to do or they did something and whatever showed up there is to collect, right? To collect a deal or to collect something, you know? Uh, I believe that's why it happened that day that evening so we covered up locked the gate, gates again and put uh wood underneath the fences <laughs> so this is saturday saturday evening right saturday evening we're going to sleep the same thing start happening that happened the day before all that activity that i just mentioned happened again all night we now wake up sunday morning there's crap everywhere. So me and my brother spent all of, uh, yeah, yeah, all that day doing the same thing we did the day before. Uh, but it only happened, happened two times that I, that I remember. It only happened two times. It's kind of like, it was like a whether a dimension open or something in that nature something happened that it caused a kind of activity uh there where i live in uh i used to live in 930 west main uh for those that that are live there nearby uh i don't know i don't think my father is there no more i'm not sure but if you want to take your evp recorders to to that along that fence along the house you're gonna you're gonna catch something you're gonna hear something if you're spiritually gifted it's just uh, all i'm saying to you is be careful because what is there uh is is dangerous you know it has the ability to attach itself to somebody what i mean by that is to possess something or someone you know it's something something's there that needs to you know whether it's an open portal or to me, that's what it seems like. There's some kind of portal opening nearby there that's causing that kind of phenomenon. Another thing, uh, our city, or that city at Raymondville, is built under limestone, in which limestone can cause paranormal activity to happen, or supernatural activity, because they're going to use the energy of a limestone to surface up. No difference when uh, people are out there hunting, right? Uh, they're going through the creeks. They're going to the lakes. There's a lot, a lot of limestone of the creeks and lakes in which they use that as energy uh, to manifest. Even in the when you go to the woods, there's a, a lot of areas that have limestone that they use that uh, to, to manifest. You know... Uh, I know some people they haven't been through what I've been through. You know, they they haven't lost a lo a loved one to domestic violence at the age of 15. They haven't looked out for their brothers and sisters. They were way younger. The youngest was 2 and 5. They never been in that situation, right? That they had to grow up at a young age work two jobs protect the home because of the crookedness of Willisie County that these people you know I'm gonna tell you how crooked these people are that at that time frame 
Uh, they had some guy selling insurances, right? Insurance claims. And they were selling it to anybody. This is how wicked they were, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you right now, straight up. This guy was selling insurance to families. They had a lot of children. So they would say, we can put all your children on the insurance, right? But what they were doing was this. If, if they got a family to place all the children on the insurance, it's all about the money, right? These people were, were taken out. They were literally taking out families for the money. At th that time frame in the 80s, anybody could put anybody on an insurance, right? So if they got you to put all your children plus yourself on an insurance, then they hire people to come after your family, to take out your family. So basically what I'm saying is, and the reason I found out this, brothers and sisters, is through the government, you know, because even though I was in the military, uh, I believe it was up after Operation Desert Storm, I went back home. Uh, the police department didn't want me to be there because, or the police, the person who was in charge of the police, they see me as a threat because, you know, I'm, I was military already. So they see me as a threat that what they had done to me that I guess they thought I was going to do something, right? Because I was just coming back from combat. And I remembered all the wrongdoings that done did to me and my family. But that wasn't on my mind. My mind was to visit my, my family. But at the same time, what was in the back of my mind is to get my brother and sisters out of there. Because I know that that insurance claim that people were buying that had their names and my name still on it, that that was still active. So I got surrounded by six officers at this little bar there called uh, Estrella or something right across the Superette. I got surrounded by six, six cops. One of them was Mike Chapa, or uh, what's his name, Mike uh, Rosales. Mike Rosales. And all the other young guys, I knew them from school, you know. So they're telling me that I have to leave town. Uh, if I don't leave town, you know, I just barely got into town. Say, so if I don't leave town, that something bad is going to happen to me. You know, I'm barely coming back from combat. So I'm there and I haven't even opened my beer, you know. So I said, oh, here we go. So I said, look, man, I'm here visiting my sister. I'm not leaving town right now. So they said, okay, we, t we warned you and they took off, right? So next thing you know, you know, one thing about there, Romanville, Texas, is anybody is it's a poor town, uh, you know, people are, have no jobs, and they'll do anything for a quick buck, right? So this 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 people they offered some people some money to come to come after me, you know. So as uh, I see this guy, I was in a restroom. He come and step on my foot. It was a big guy. I knew the guy who who it was too. And I just looked at him, and right there when he did that, I could have, I could have easily, easily handled him, no problem. But I knew that there was more than one. So when I went outside, I seen like twelve or thirteen, thirteen guys waiting for me. You know, they said uh, they said they're going to be waiting for me. So okay, so I just kept, I drank my beers. You know, I was drinking my beers. Then another guy showed up. You know, it's when the, the when it's closing time. He showed up and he had a, a gun up with him, you know, and he's looking. And he looked at me, and he said, "Hey, what's up, hey?" It was somebody that I knew that I grew up with, right? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? And I said, "Well, I, yeah." I told him I got a situation. I said, "Well," I, and I told him the story of what happened, you know. But I believe he was one of them too. <laughs> he was one of the guys that got sent. Say, how about we we make a deal right now, and nobody needs to get hurt. Tell those guys out there that because I know you know this this about money. Tell them that I'll buy 
three cases of beer right now. I'll let them have the three cases of beer. And they can say whatever they want to say to them, that they beat me up or whatever. But nobody needs to get hurt. Tell them that I'm buying three cases of beer. Tell them what they want to drink and I'll buy it for them. So he goes outside, comes back, and he tell them what kind of beer uh, they wanted. So I bought them the beers, right? I bought them the beers, and I went home safely. Uh, but sometimes you have to, I should have said, do it that way. You know, I know I've, I've, I've had numbers stacked against me. It would have been a challenge, but at the same time, you know, you got to, there's different options you can do use or do besides violence you know and i was uh, highly trained to be able to handle the situation but i didn't want to get in trouble when all that had happened i had called my chain of command because it was on leave you know when you're on leave they give you a number if something happens you need to call your chain of command i call my chain of command you know when i was in, in the bar and i told him what was going on i take care of the name of the guy and it was a uh, my immediate supervisor so he called the police department and they're trying to figure out what's going on so so as i reported it they had to go investigate you know they investigated ramonville texas believe it or not the government went to ramonville texas they investigated it uh there was a guy that was that worked in the police department that told him the whole scoop of what the real deal was the real deal was that they didn't want me there is because they had there were still insurances that people had bought they had my name my brother and sister's name they had their names on it so the reason I found that is because they called me into my company commander's office and they let me know you know of what of what went down how it went down uh, uh dealing with my mother you know that had to do with you could say insurance fraud from these people that were blaming uh they were buying the insurances in which there was a lot of people involved so they gave me two weeks to get my brother and sisters out of the valley they had told me i could not go back there because there was a hit on me uh, a hit on me but my the same guy that I called he told me look man I know you're not supposed to go down there I'm gonna give you two weeks to go get your brother and sisters out of there so I went there and I got my brother and sisters moved them up to up here to Central Texas and that's where they reside now in Central Texas I'm more sure by now uh, those injuries are uh, an old they're no good no more <laughs> Uh, there was this guy, I believe he was selling global life insurance, global life insurance. And all the people that were buying it were all, were all in cahoots of, of that in which people had to die in order for them to get the claim of the insurance. That's how wicked they are down there in South Texas. I went through it. And, and what's sad about it is that I share this story. You see, I'm not reading nothing. I'm, I'm sharing the story with you all because I experienced, I experienced that, right? So I got idiots that I knew from school trying to call me a liar, but I went through it, right? And it's like, man, you don't know what they tell me. I'm never, and they're like, I never witnessed that. Yeah, because you probably wasn't under, <laughs> under the insurance. I'm more sure if, if your parents would have bought that insurance, that there would have probably been a hit on, on you and your family, your brothers and sisters. Like there was a hit on my brothers and sisters. My cousin, my, my cousin Jesus Carvajal was there. He was there to witness how they were coming after us. They had no shame in their game. They were sending people to our house, man. They were sending people to our house to come up against us. Luckily, my cousin from Fort Worth, which is Jesus and Joe Carvajal, uh, 
showed up. They were there, and it was uh, also uh, his the younger brother was there also. So we, it was an me, my brothers. So it was we were six. We were ready to fight, you know. And we we had all kinds of things set up there uh, uh, at our house that if somebody entered the yards, we kept the front and the back protected. That somebody was going to get seriously in, uh, messed up, man. That's that's all I got to say. Uh, but yes, it's a true story. You know when. And you know what? What's sad is a lot of people, there's people that are empowered there. Remember Texas right now, commissioners, uh, mayors or whatever. They're, they're Oaken that was in power at that time. They're the ones that were involved in that. So... If I say what I say, I'm saying it because I experienced it. I'm not saying to tarnish anybody's name or reputation, but if they were doing wicked things, evil things, trying to take out people for 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 insurance, well, they shouldn't be mad at me talking about what I'm talking about because I'm speaking in truth. They didn't go through that. I don't think they would like it if somebody would attack the family that they have right now, right? If I wanted to be a, should I say, if I was about vengeance, right? If I was about vengeance, I could have avenged everything that was done to me time and time again. But I chose not to. I chose to leave it up to God. See, that's the difference between me and those individuals. A lot of those individuals that were coming up against me, they're they're dead. They're They're deceased. And I know some of them wasn't resting right, which I had to forgive. The people that wasn't resting right, I had to forgive because they were coming to me <laughs> spiritually because they were the ones that came up against me in a negative way. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm a, I'm, I'm a truthful person. They can put a, a lie detector on me if they like. But Willis County is not going to do that because... They're corrupt. You know, they ain't going to do that. Uh, what they do do is try to tarnish your reputation as an individual. Try to say you're crazy. They try to make it seem that your whole family's uh, crazy to cover uh, the wrongdoings that they, they do. That's what they do. That's what they're about. So just like I'm talking about right now, and they will share the story. If I were to go over there, somebody would probably try to come and challenge me physically because they're wearing a badge because they're, they're part of that uh that that crookedness but if they would take the badge away and say okay let's settle that man of man then they would know the true warrior in me they they would know the true warrior in me and i don't think they want to know the true warrior in me they don't want to know sergeant cs because sergeant cs handles business accordingly but that's why i i choose not to go down back home i stay away from there i stay up here in central texas because you know to me the past is a past you know i've already forgiven the people that come up against me in a negative way and i leave it at that but just because i leave it i've forgiven them doesn't mean that i can't talk about it you know it's something that i experienced you know, for all those people that are holding things within themselves and they, they don't talk about it, I suggest to y'all, speak about it, talk about it. I'm not afraid to talk about anything that I've seen, witnessed, or, uh, the trials, tribulations, obstacles of, of what I've been through, uh, whether it be when I was back home, whether it was in the military, you know, I talk about it. People just don't know. I got the shirt right now. It's got the tank. It says GOAT. He says goat on here. My friends, uh, they were with me in Germany. They had a nickname for me. They call me the ultimate warrior. Uh, they would call me the ultimate warrior for a reason. Because I handle a lot of people over there. They were coming at me in a physical threat. So I had to do what I had to do. So they call me the ultimate warrior means that I was undefeated, you know.
That was a long time ago. But I still got the mentality. I train daily, even though I might feel some aches and pains. You know, I remember what my mother used to say. If you can take care of yourself, who's going to take care of you? So that's why I work out daily, except on the weekends. I work on Monday through Friday. Uh, I've never been the biggest guy. I've never been the strongest guy. But through Jesus Christ, I've overcome all the David and <laughs> all the all the Goliaths in the world. All the people that I were came, some of them were way bigger than me. And I were came them because I had the strength of Hercules or Samson. I had the speed, super, uh, super, super speed, that they were too slow for me. Uh, I believe the biggest guy I ever came that I defeated in in a mutual combat or at that time was Bandingo fights because I was fighting a lot of African American. This guy I was seeing bench over seven hundred pounds uh, in the gym to send that guy to come and take me out. I think he was affiliated with the Black Panthers. And they're like, this is a guy that's messing with y'all. And he looked at me and he said, you're, mess you're the one that's been defeating all my brothers? You know, which is talking about African-American. Uh, I'm not saying nothing to him. I'm just studying them. You know, I'm, I'm just studying from up, looking at them, seeing what kind of witness I might have because I know I had a fight, right? He said, I'm going to tell you something right now. When I grab a hold of you, he said, I'm going to grab you and I'm going to break your back and you're going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life. And he's laughing and everybody's laughing. So I'm studying and I noticed that he's got like a, on his left side, he's fairing his left side more than the right. So I'm just, I'm, I'm the zone. You know, he's, he's talking, he's wasting his, his breath, you know, because I'm not really paying too much attention. I'm just focusing in. You know, after so many fights, he was like my 40th fight, I believe. After so many fights of, of defeating the people, I was like, all right, I've seen what I'm going to do. So, you know, I got him to say something just to get, I would always tell him something, like one thing, just to see what they say back to me, whether they cuss at me or insult me, insult me on my race. That's what I used as fuel for fire, right? But I wouldn't be mad. I would just use it as, as fuel. And I remember the first punch this guy took. I noticed how slow he was. He, he was it was a like super slow. He was a big guy full of muscle. I know if it would have uh, connected with me, I probably would have felt it. But I was too fast, and I would slap him in the back of his head. And he was getting pissed off, and every time he threw a punch, I would dodge the punch and slap him in the back of his head. That's how fast how fast I was. So I let him throw one punch towards my, my head. I took a step back. I hit him on the elbow. His buddy spun. I was, I was trained with the movable objects. His buddy spun and twisted. That's a hard of a hit. Uh, that I hit him because I was trained with the movable objects. And when I hit him, I seen the temple area open. And that's why I, I hit him with right in the temple vein this guy was six like six nine big mo it was big and it's kind of like his 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 battery power to his brain shut off when I hit him there so he's just looking and this thing you know all that weight just went straight down to the ground boom he's passed out I, I put my knees on his shoulders and I fix him and work him over and they pull me off of him you know, like I said, you know, there's there's just people that say, "Well, I, I'm I'm a big guy. I, I'm I'm big. I'm I'm this. You know, you know, I'm big. I, I, man, I I used to deal with big, big guys. I used to handle big guys. It was like like stealing uh, candy from a kid. The bigger you are, the slower you're gonna be. I'm telling you, the, this guys just because they were big think that their their size is gonna scare somebody i've never been afraid of doesn't matter what size are it's like you always got to expect the unexpected because it's you know 
I fought people. Uh, you know, the, some of these guys, there were there were Crips, there were Bloods, some were from the Bronx. You know, I fought a lot of people from different areas, but I overcame every single one of them. Now I'm just I'm just talking to y'all some stories of who I am. You know, you know, like I have people that that troll me on Facebook, and they don't stop trolling me. He said, like, "Look, man, I I ain't doing nothing to y'all. Just just leave me alone. You know, you don't you don't want to mess with with fire. You don't you don't want to mess with this combat veteran. You know, uh, I I did what I had to do when I was in combat. You know, so it's kind of like these guys that come at me. They don't know who they're dealing with. <laughs> they really don't know who they're dealing dealing with, man. Uh, they're they're messing with uh with TNT, man." I don't know who they're dealing with, you know. Yes, sir. That dude was out cold, man. I, I don't think he was... I, honestly, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that guy, after the blow that I gave him, he was never the same, man. When I seen him one time, he had the shakes. Like, if he had seizures, he was trembling. His whole body would tremble. He was never the same from the blow. But I had no choice but to do that because as big as it was, you know, I had to eliminate the threat, and which I did. But th that guy was never the same after the blow, man. He was not the same person after the blow. But what, what am I supposed to do? You know, if somebody's telling me they're going to paralyze me, I have to... I should have say, not eliminate, because I didn't eliminate them, but uh, put put a stop to the threat as as quick quickly as possible. That's exactly what it did. So uh, tonight, man, it's for all the late late owls, man, late night owls. You know, uh, you know. I've been through a lot of things, man, uh, that people just don't know. Uh, I used to run like 20 miles a day when I was in Germany, 10 in the morning and then 10 more at night. And the other things that I, that I would do, I can't really say, you know, the only thing I could tell you is this, that I would train, train at nighttime. You know, when people see the videos that I do when I go out there to the woods at nighttime, brother, brother Joe, whoever served in the military, we trained during the day and night. So I'm, I was used to it, you know, but before even I joined the military, I was already training at night, you know. So it's no big deal for me to go into areas where it's dark. Fear, the fear factors out of the equation because when you train yourself to your surroundings you train yourself to be first in nature you know to react to a situation without even thinking about it it'll be first in nature but my cousin Jesus Carvalho he knows what I'm talking about you could say uh, he guided me right? he guided me through a lot of things I had, to I had to toughen up, man. I had to toughen up down there in South Texas. But then I had to toughen up in the military and where I've been in combat. You know, I had to, you know, it's all that, everything that I, that I knew, everything that I knew to do, I used, I utilized. It was after when I was sick in the military that I knew that I couldn't be that way. So I had to change my path. Yes. Uh, I had to change my path. You know, being with your guards up all the time. Uh, with your heart, you know, when you overcome people physically. Or there's people that are coming like gets to you in a negative way it kind of changes your heart some because 
when people stay persistent, they'll want you to anger. I've learned, yes, this is one thing now, I've learned not to anger. So I'm attending the Love Foundation. A lot of people that have ever come in the military, even in Germany, was through a Love Foundation. Imagine that. Imagine getting beat by somebody maintaining a Love Foundation. I wouldn't anger. I wouldn't anger. I, I would let people take a free shot. And then I take care of business, you know. It's like I was used to it, man. But training, things that I was raised was a lot harder than the fights. <laughs> Than the fights that I, that I got involved in because I was already I was you could you could say highly trained and I was able to overcome somebody within a matter of seconds. I think the fastest the TKO I had was like two seconds, <laughs> two seconds between two seconds to ten seconds they were done. You know that's how fast. But like I said, it's it's first to nature, you know because you you train you have to train you know. I wish, uh, well, no, nah, I ain't going to say wish. I know there was guys that had camcorders back then that were recording the fights from up in the in the billets. But, you know, they probably look grainy if they were, uh, it's nighttime and they were trying to record. Uh, I don't know if anybody has that, but that's the past. I try to avoid that. But uh, I've always been a warrior of heart. Uh, but still, man, you know, people want to test you. You know, you get tested physically. People want to test you physically, and then people want to test you spiritually. You know, it's a never-ending story. You know, it's like this. How, how does a old boy say, uh, uh, Mark Henry, uh, this is what I do, you know? something. This is something, this is what I do. I've been doing this all my life. But I, I know I know a lot of people have a lot of stories and but there's a lot of a lot of things where where people follow suit of what's being taught to them. You know, they don't want to disrespect their elders or should I say the the people that are showing them certain ways. So they have to follow suit, right, of what's being shown to them. But everybody's got the choice to be their own person, you know. So you got to make the decision sooner or later of where you want to be and uh, where you want to stand. I, I deal with the kind of things through trolls, uh, people with podcasts that dislike me. They think that I don't know what they're trying to do, but I've been knowing what they've been trying to do all along. I just play possum or play along, but I know who they are. The the thing is, for the people that are coming, I guess, in, uh, in a negative way, I already know who you are. It is, it's a lot more than just one person. I know what you're trying to do. Uh, the only thing I can say to you all is this. I know. Let me do my spiritual works that I do. And just leave me alone. I know who you are. I've been knowing. I just go with the flow of things. That's what I do. Go with the flow of things. Flow like water. I go with the flow of things. People come at me from different... You can come at me from different directions of all you want to. Playing the games that you play. But I know. I know who you are. I've been knowing. I've been knowing who you are for a very long time. I just play along. But you know what? I'm not playing along no more. Uh, I'm, 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 start, I'm getting refocused on doing me, doing the works on, for my group, spiritual encrypted encounters, and I got other things planned that I want to do. So I'm going to do what I want to do uh, regardless of who supports me, who don't support me? I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. You you can you can come at me with your fake profiles. What? How? However many fake profiles you want to create, 
you're not going to stop me from doing the works that I do. Which is spiritual works. Basically what I'm saying is, the works that I do, I'm trying to awaken my brothers and sisters spiritually. So they can have a chance to be able to fight this unseen forces, this unseen war spiritually with the love foundation. I'm trying to awaken my brothers and sisters. As you come at me in a negative way, thinking it's a joke. It's not a joke because the spiritual war is very real. So what you're actually doing is you stop him, stopping me, trying to stop me from doing my spiritual works. I'm still doing regardless. Whether I help out a homeless person, I help out somebody that is, is being spiritually afflicted, I help out people spiritually. You, you're not stopping me from doing my works. But what you are doing is you letting know you letting Jesus Christ know what you're about because you want to be uh, slick, wicked, and doing the wrong the wrongs that you're doing. He knows. You don't have to answer to me. You got to answer to him. So all I'm saying is you're interfering in something that I'm doing that is very important to me and to the Heavenly Father, which is awakening my brother and sister spiritually. I, I'm not I'm not into reading books. I'm not into reading into books. What I do is I follow what I'm guided to do spiritually, and that's to the, the Heavenly Father. That's what I do. All throughout my life, I run into obstacle after obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, and it continues to happen. You see some of the pictures that I have here, spiritually encrypted encounters? They're crazy, right? Uh, it happens. It's, it's nothing new. This is, I just said, I've been uh, something that is God has guided me to do all my life. It's that I did, that I wanted to do ever since I lost my mother was to fight the good fight, which is the good fight is nothing here on earth, but is the the good fight that I'm talking about is the sp unseen spiritual warfare, and that's so this is what I do. People don't people that don't want to accept what I do. It, I believe that they're being bonded some kind of way or another because they don't want to change their ways. They want to continue to do what they do. You know, you you can do whatever you want to do. That's on you. But don't come to my group, to my YouTube channel. Come there. Say negative things, you know. Uh, I mean, if you do, you do, but it ain't gonna stop me from doing the works that I do. You know, this is, this is who I am. You know, I'm a spiritual warrior. I'm a, should I say, highly trained warrior physically. Uh, the nickname of the ultimate warrior. This was bestowed upon me by some of my. Uh, fellow brother in arms because I witnessed what I was capable of doing uh, but it's not about that but I train daily you know I train daily uh, with the workouts that I do you know I need to to get back at, at doing other things you know, I'm not getting any younger I'm getting older What's more important sometimes is we still got to keep our body active. You know, we got to stay active. But at the same time, we got to stay spiritually strong. We'll take our love foundation. We have to forgive people of our past in order for their love foundation to, to be strong. And it'll cut any negative ties of the past, which will make us uh, feel better and uh, become greater. I don't know who's here. I, th I still see Brother Joe Cervantes there. Yeah, Brother Joe, I think you used to, I used to, I, it was you and your bro, man. I remember you. Yeah, you calling a night, cousin? Yeah, I'm thinking about calling a night, too. Uh, I would just, 
benching a little bit of who I am as an individual and uh, why I do what I do. Do you know how I work out daily? I post a picture every day, the same pose every day. I, I post it because the following day, I might not, somewhere within me, something's telling me not to work out because you're feel, I'm feeling pain from old injuries in the military. So when I get on Facebook and I'll see the picture from the day before, I say, okay, let me hit, get this workout down, get out of the way, and I place a picture. My workouts have decreased some from the repetitions that I used to do, but I used to do a lot of reps uh, about 10 years ago. A lot of reps. But they declined because, you know, I feel injuries from the military or whatever. But I'm still doing a good workout. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in. Whoever's here, I don't know how I've been on. Uh, let's see. Does it say how long I've been on here? Uh, I wanted to share a story with y'all before I go uh, to summer, uh, summarize of what I'm talking about. Summarize what I'm talking about, about the spiritual battles of things that I've witnessed. I'm trying to think of a story of an experience that kind of changed me. That's when I found out that the balance is real. Uh, now I've had numerous experiences from the other side of the of the balance because they they surface up, you know, or they 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 surface up and show me that they're they're there or whatever. But not, I'm not afraid of them. But I guess uh, to sum it sum it it up in a, in a way uh, will be. How crazy this is, is I was in Germany, uh, in Erlangen, Germany, and I was on a phone, on a phone booth trying to contact my wife at the time that I was married to, but she, I couldn't get a hold of her, right? So I called numerous times, and it's like, I don't know what time it is over there in the States. So I left it alone, and when I stepped out of the booth, I could hear whistling, right? Different kinds of whistles. And I'm looking around, I'm looking at, it's like a, like a, like a crossroad, right? Like a cross. And I'm right there in the road looking left or right and I'm not seeing nothing. Then at that time I was, uh, shoot, 19, yeah, 19, 20 years old. And then I hear it. I'm looking. And what I witness is a rip in time where out of the darkness you can see a crack and there was an opening. There was kind of like a golden light. And out of the, the golden light, I seen this, this fat man on one of those bikes that has the, the big wheel and the little wheel in the back. He's passing by and he's got an umbrella coming out of this rip in time. And I'm hearing all these different kinds of birds, whistle sounds. He's got his mouth open. His mouth is open and all this noises of different birds is coming out of his mouth. So he looks at me and he's making all these noises coming out of his mouth. And as he's passing, passing me by, like he's, the time is more real slow. Because he's not even moving fast. He's going slow. Another rip and tie opens. And he goes through the rip. Through the rip. And, it, and it, the, 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 the rip closes. And he disappears. That's been, you could say, uh, kind of like the, the, what I'm speaking about, what I've been through in my life. It's all dealing with time, man. That's what it is. Uh, time that's, that's all we got is uh, time 
you know, uh, we always got time to do something. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is try to do the best that you can for yourself of what you want to do. Not about what's here out here, materialistic too much. It's about training your spirit. Train your spirit. You gotta train your spirit to maintain a love foundation in order for you to be able to cross over to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You gotta have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way that's gonna happen. That you will have an opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You gotta have a personal relationship with him. That's the only way. But besides that, brothers and sisters, um, I want to say thank you all for those who tuned in tonight. Cousin Jesus Carvajal, uh, Brother Joe Cervantes. You probably got all kinds of stories, Brother Joe. Just like I know uh, Brother Jesus uh, has a lot of stories. But maybe one day if y'all want to share some stories with me, whether what you experienced uh, back home, where you come from, or something you might have witnessed, a supernatural, paranormal, you know, share with me. Uh, send me, send me, a, send it through Messenger, and maybe we, we can do a live from our group one day. And what I normally do, uh, I do the videos here, then I download them, I'm placing them on YouTube because I got uh, it's called Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. Uh, and I do with Sister Maria. Um, thank, uh, thank you. God bless you too, Sister Maria. Uh, what I do, I share it on uh, on YouTube channel. I believe sharing is caring. You know, I always tell my son, look son, I know you're busy. You re re really don't talk, talk too much about nothing serious. But I'm just letting you know, there's this group called Spiritual Encrypted Encounters on YouTube, which is my my channel. Or on, on Facebook, I got a group called Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. I have a lot of videos saying a lot of things. If something were to ever happen to me, you can look there, and I'm going to leave you, leaving you all that, just in case you were thinking about me, you get lonely, listen to the videos. I got all the wisdom and knowledge that you need to know right there. But, you know, in life, or loved ones, or next to kin, they're going to choose their own path. But <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with sharing the wisdom and knowledge of for what we're going through or what we've been through that's able to help somebody out that might be going through what we're going through. This is why I do these videos. You know, uh, it's not about anything else. It's about helping one another, you know. I've had people that said they've been being spiritually attacked and they said they remember what I said uh, to rebuke them in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, uh, they did that or they, or they go into prayer go into the deliverance prayer and whatever is there disappears and leaves you know leaves them alone because they're def they're defending themselves spiritually you know uh, through your uh, spiritual law you know they have to identify themselves so what are these uh, unseen forces going to do supernatural forces they're going to they like to manifest something that's demonic or supernatural like a skin skin rock or shape shifter disembodied demonic nephilim they're going to manifest into something beastly. They manifest into something beastly for the fear factor to scare you. If they can scare you, then the spiritual opening is right there for them to spiritually attack you. We see a lot of that in the military. A lot of soldiers being bonded by this this forces of the infant, like they're going to Iraq, Kuwait, Bosnia. They're being uh, attacked by the same forces that are here. You know, I believe they're the same, but they're called uh, their different names. Uh, but the ones that I'm talking about overseas, where the soldiers are, are being spiritually bonded, is called the Dijin. There's a lot of soldiers coming bonded by the Dijin, and some of the soldiers uh, that they're afflicted, they're being so spiritually bonded that some of them take their lives. You know. And so they got PTSD, PTSD, PTSD. Yes, you, there's PTSD from combat and all kinds of stuff. Taking a taking a life, you get PTSD by that. You know, seeing a dead corpse and or, or whatever. But it's about 
freeing what's was was stopping us from being who we are. You know, the government they don't wanna they don't want to hear that that you're going through some things. They just want you to do your job. You know, you sign a contract, they want you to fulfill your contract. You sign for four years, eight years, they want you to fulfill your contract. You know, they don't care about anything else that's happening on you. They, they you're just a, a number. You know, you got a, accountability as people. They want all the people to be 100% to be able to do the mission. It's just like they want the people to be 100%. They need all vehicles to be 100% ready at all times. Just in case they're called uh, for combat to go to an area that want 100% accountability. That's the military. I'm just glad that I'm not in the military no more. I did the time that I had to do in the military. You know, I was in a, a tanker. Uh, tankers were the first to go with, with the infantry. You know, we're, we're, we're like, we're cross-attached with the infantry and they're cross-attached with us. Uh, if there is a immediate danger to to the government, we're the ones that are they're called first, and the first to go, you know, in the CAV. That's what they're called, first to go. I was in the CAV for nine years. When I was in Germany, I was in 135 Armor. We were called Iron Knights. We were the first ones to go. You know, when all the things started happening over there, I remember getting in a little cargo plane with, with nets, red nets, and we flew all the way to uh, Kuwait City to go face the, the Medina Republican Guard, you know, which was Saddam Hussein's, uh, Saddam Hussein's number one best army, the elite. Uh, the, the Medina Republican Guard had defeated Russia, in which Russia got tired and they left back to Russia because they couldn't de defeat uh, the Medina Republican Guard. Uh, we went in there and we destroyed the Medina, Medina Republican Guard, which was Sa Saddam Hussein's elite army. They were, they were, they were so elite that they considered them to be God's warriors, right? When we, went, when we went there, they had done some things to some other people from Kuwait where they had killed women and children. We prayed because we believed in God, you know, so the acts that they did were against God. So we defeated them in combat. You know, we overcame them big time and this they stopped existing, you know, but they were there, you know, as uh, we worked with uh, people from the, uh, the, the Israel army, uh, with a lot of different armies from Germany, Germany was there and some other armies that were there with us. I remember the soldiers, how they were dressed, how they looked, no, but that was a long time ago. But anyways, if you're in a combat environment, there's bullets flying, there's round, uh, tank rounds flying at you. I've seen it, man. I've seen them flying towards me, but they're run out of velocity and land in the sand. You know, it's kind of like being in a movie, but it's real bullets flying your way, you know. People coming out of Fox uh, underground bunkers. They were pop right in front of my tank as I was moving, and... As, as soon as they will pop up, they will pop back down, and they they will, they're they're gone. You know, I witnessed a lot of things. You know, if I had pictures, but I got rid of the pictures because they were too in depth, and I didn't feel right having those pictures, so I got rid of them. Uh, they were given to me from the battle we was we went in. I didn't want them because they were like not good. It was dealing with what was left from the enemy, you know. I when I was out there, I did not kept any souvenirs of any kind of sort. Uh, there was a, a lot of dead bodies. When there's a lot of dead bodies, the dogs will come. I remember uh, we were in the front line. We destroyed them. We could see all the burning tanks. And they told us we got to stay in place. 
I think we stayed in place for two, three days there in the same location where we were fighting, you know. So it's like I kept my guards up because I didn't know if there were still people in the underground, bunker, uh, underground bunkers. And they brought this truck with a big microphone and it was somebody talking their language, telling them to give up and stuff. And which some people, they come out of the ground and they were giving up. But I couldn't sleep, you know, because I'm there in the front lines. There, there wasn't a body bag detail. All these dogs are coming from from everywhere. And all you could hear was growling and, and fighting, where the dogs are fighting, because they're fighting for the dead corpse, and they're eating the dead corpse. Because there was no body bag detail yet. I remember the, there was one dog that tried to attack me, and I, I nearly killed it. <laughs> they were trying to figure out what had happened, and I told them that the dog went from a juggler, so they put a, uh, the contact hire was happening with those dogs and they killed all the dogs that were out there that were eating <clears throat> body parts, should I say. The sound of that, hearing it every night, oh man, it's like, it's not good. Then when the sun will rise, you see all these dogs with a fat, fat stomach because that's what they were doing. But anyways, like I said, people that come up against me in a negative way, they don't know who I am, they don't know what it, what I've been through, uh, and they don't, they don't know that I'm a spiritual fighter, a physical fire, fighter, and a warrior. They don't know this. So I'll say to y'all, you know, just let me be, man. I mean, y'all wasn't out there in the front lines with me when uh, when I was fighting the Medina Republican Guard. You wasn't there uh, when I faced all those Bandingo fights. Just let me be who I am, you know. Let me be who I am. I believe I deserve to be who I am after what I've been through. That I, I believe uh, I can be the the person that I am right now continue to do the videos that I do for my group and share my wisdom and knowledge with people you know if you do not like what I say or, or what I say about anything well, simply just <clears throat> block me that's simple <clears throat> block me don't follow me block me well what would what would you focus on setting up fake accounts, getting in cahoots with a lot of people, and targeting me. When I am an American hero, I don't fall for my country, I should have the right to have this this little group that I have and more. Uh, I'm not asking anybody for a single penny. I'm just doing doing the works that I'm uh, that I'm doing here on the spiritual encrypted encounters. So the only thing I'm, I'm saying basically is just let me be, you know. I ain't bothering you. But anyways, you can hear the train in the background. How you doing, Brother Larry? But uh, yeah, man, it's kind of like <clears throat> people, are, some people don't want to hear the spiritual truth, man. And that's why I talk through spiritual truth. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the spiritual truth. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in with this late night owl. Uh, I guess venting in a sense of a way or talking a little bit about myself or what I've been through in my life. For those who don't know, they will never know. For those that, that have the time to, to view this or that have been here tonight, thank you for tuning in. Uh, God bless you, your family, your loved ones. I always remember one thing. This is, this is something I say all the time. Always maintain a love foundation, regardless of situation. As you maintain the love foundation, it will get you out of the situation you might be in, uh, that that you're in, whether it be physically or spiritually.
the reason you maintain the love foundation because if it's something unseen that's using somebody to come up against you, he's not going to be able to come up against you because the love foundation is going to protect you and it's going to deflect the negativity that's coming your way. Love, light, and blessings to every one of y'all. Everybody have a beautiful, blessed evening. I'm going to uh, leave this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, at this time, I'd like to pray for all my brothers and sisters here on Spiritual Encrypted Encounters on Facebook, YouTube. Those who follow my TikToks under HCS. I want to I wanna pray for all my brothers and sisters. Uh, we're placing uh, Heavenly Crosses on their doorways, on their windows. We're calling upon you to send your heavenly angels a cleansing to cleanse their homes. Also, we're placing heavenly crosses from head to toe for you to send your heavenly angels to cleanse our personal foundation for any, anything negative. Uh, for you to cleanse, if there's anything around our, uh, our property, our house, or within us, in a negative way, we tie, bind, and rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. You are not allowed within our foundation, whether it be our home. You're not allowed our, foundation, our personal foundation, which is us, our vessel. You're not allowed. We're taking authority over you in Jesus Christ's name. This we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yeah, I got my little lights on. You like it? Uh, maybe I should have made the video standing up like this. If uh, y'all noticed, I'm a night owl, guys. I'm, I'm wide awake right now. But thank you all, guys. Uh, it means a lot for those who are, for those who are truly sincere, that have been sincere to me, that are true, that they're not coming at me fraudulent, that they're not coming at me playing games. Those that are 100% true, I love y'all, man, because be you. Don't let anybody guide you to do their dirty works. Be you. Uh, to those people that come at me in a positive way, uh, show me who they are. I appreciate y'all. You have a beautiful, blessed evening. And God bless every single one of y'all. Peace. Or should I say good morning?